All right. Now, behind me, I've got to tell the story on this one. It's, it's, of course, I look like crap. I'm in the hospital, but here's the deal. I don't feel so good. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I got cramps. And it's, you know, the day's going on, and it's just not going away. So around, I don't know, 11 at night, I'm going, I'm really in pain. My wife goes, suck it up. You know, you're a weenie. And she's right. And I say to her, you do this every month? I'm just amazed. I mean, you know, because guys, we're such, we're so crybabies. So about 2 in the morning, I said, look, i got to go to the hospital. Now, I don't think I've ever been to an emergency room. I think maybe once before as a kid. So I go to the emergency room, and being a cancer survivor, you know, you, you get nervous. You get scared. Everything's a little an alarm that goes off. So I'm anxious. We go in the emergency room and I got severe pain. Well, severe uncomfortability. And they, they get me in the other thing. The doctor had any questions. Well, I'm cancer. So, I'm sorry. They have questions for you. You ever been in a hospital before? Well, yes, I'm a cancer survivor. Whoa. Now let's run every test. So now I'm getting very anxious. So they're running this test and MRI and this and this and this. So if I comes in around, oh, I'm guessing it's about 2.30, quarter, 3 in the morning. It's a Sunday morning. He goes, Hal, um, they've got good news and not so good news. The good news is there's no cancer. Uh, everything came back great, but the problem is your white count is highly elevated, so we think your appendix burst or is about to burst. You need emergency surgery now. Who would you like to operate? Uh, let me think for a second. I got a web guy, I got a plumber, I got an electrician. I don't have a surgeon! <laughs> you, and you just can't say, get me somebody good. So I, and you can't say, who do you recommend? Because they're not allowed to do that. So I went, I did some more questions, and finally they gave me this guy's name. So I called him up, or I call him up, they call him up, and he comes in around about 4.30. Goes, okay, we're going to operate in about 15 minutes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have a couple questions to ask you. What do you mean? And my wife's next to me. What kind of questions? First of all, have you ever done this before? <laughs> I don't know. I got some guy that's going, this is the first time I've ever done this. It'll be, we'll have some fun. No, no, no. He goes, hell, it's a slam dunk. We do these all the time. It's a very normal procedure. Don't worry about it. Okay, fine. Okay. Are you doing laparoscopic or traditional? He goes, hell, that's all we do is laparoscopic. We don't do traditional. I don't know. I got, maybe I have some country bumpkin that just wants to slice and dice that doesn't want to go to training or learning new courses or new methods. I want to make sure I got someone who's current. He goes, hell, it's laparoscopic. Okay. Are you board certified? Why? Are you board certified? Yes, I am. That's basically a higher level of degree for a physician or a surgeon. That means you have to take more tests every so many years. And it shows they're into their game. Yes, hell, I'm board certified. Last question. Yes. What time did you go to bed last night? And my wife and the doctor both look at me like, huh? What time did you go to bed last night? Why? Just curious. About 10.30. Fine. Why are you asking? Well, if you're up to 2 in the morning whooping it up, I don't want some doctor coming in going, oh, man, I'm so messed up. Or I don't want to hear whoops during surgery. So what am I doing here? I'm asking questions. I'm just going to let somebody operate on me that I've never met before. So I'll ask all of you these questions. All of you watching this, do you have a family doctor? If you do, great. Do you trust your family doctor? I'm just going to say, sure. Okay. What school did they graduate from? What percent of the class they graduate in? What's their win-loss record? How many people died in their office in the last six months? What are they paying for malpractice insurance? But we just say, yeah, sure, whatever it is, do it. Uh, your your, your uh, heart, uh, you're having some heart palpitations, uh, will you surgery? Do it. Your blood pressure is real high. I'll take the medication. How do you know how great they are? There's bad in every profession, everyone. I just want to make sure that I'm qualifying my doctor and I'm asking the right questions because this is what I'm putting my life into, my trust into. You don't hear doctors going, come here. Yeah, hell. Got an idea. <laughs> Specials this month. Appendectomies, two for one. You bring one of your buddies, one of you guys getting a good deal. Uh-uh. I want to make sure I'm around a doctor that's asking me questions, that's ascertaining my situation, and then give me a solution. So you're saying, what does that have to do with sales? I think everything, because that's what you are supposed to be doing. Whatever you're selling, whether it's a product or a service, I want you to be the doctor of sales. I want you to command the respect that they have by finding out what is the situation. Is there a problem? Maybe there's not a problem. You have to walk away and go, oh, we're done. You don't see a doctor going, looking at you, going, spleen, appendix, tonsils, adenoids, brain. They're asking you questions. Everything's fine. Let's say your blood pressure's real high. Your pulse is 72. Your cholesterol is 135. Your triglycerides are good. Everything's perfect. You're eating 66 Twinkies a day, and your weight is good. Your doctor will say, don't change. I want you to be the doctor of sales. Ask questions. Build that trust. I trusted my surgeon. I'll use him again. Hopefully not.